they're still looking for a place to settle because the, the owner of the building isn't willing to fix it. And so they're trying to find a new location and we've kind of put them off to a, another date uh, ahead yet and uh, to minister there. But uh, so we just want to thank your pastor for inviting us to come at the behest of, of uh, the bishops and especially Ron to be here. In fact, I'm just glad to be anywhere. So, and if I can remember where I've been, then, um, you know, that's a bonus. So. <laughs> we want to start off. We, we, we do sense the presence of the Lord. He's here already. Amen. 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 So, um, we're going to start with a slow song and then kind of pick it up from there. But uh, this song speaks to the fact that He is present. He is here with us. He's Hallelujah. Here. Thank you. 
Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory. Yes. Thank you, Lord. are there 
<laughs> we just have a mailing address there now. And uh, I was born and raised in Portland, and uh, Dina was uh, born in Sykeston, Missouri, and raised in California, mm -hmm. so she's really a mess. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but her folks, are, her mom was uh, uh, from Missouri, her dad was uh, uh, from Arkansas, and uh, they met and God saved her dad. And in fact, uh, in September, we were in Missouri. And so we had the privilege of ministering at the church, not physically the same church, but the same entity as far as the congregation and church that her dad was saved in awesome. about 50 or so years ago. And so we're just, that was just a real honor and privilege to be a part of this. God's Martin to Texas. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Amen. 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 Thank you. Just worship the Lord with us. Praise Him. Amen. Come breakfast with praise, I bring a heart that wants you 
We do all kinds of music. We love all kinds of music. We were raised on Southern Gospel, but uh, we just love all types. And in fact, usually the first question I get or is asked by pastors is, what style do you sing? What type of music do you do? And I had a lot of trouble ask, answering that question at first, uh, when we first started traveling about five years ago. And uh, I might just add, this, just so you have a little more background concerning us, uh, I'm a pastor for 46 years, and the Lord sent us on the road. And uh, that's what we've been doing for the last five years. And uh, uh, But when I answered that question, I struggled to answer it, you know, clearly, easily, because we do a lot of different kinds of music. And so finally the Lord uh, just kind of dropped in my heart one word. One word, and it's eclectic. That's our style. Because we do just a lot of different kinds, and I, I kind of add to that everything from country to Celtic to Cajun to Calypso. So, you know, it's all good C words for preachers. <laughs> preachers Amen. And uh, this next song was one we had just started working on a few months ago. Um, I've never been back here. I, you know, past the Rocky Mountains. I've never been out here, not this way. Nina has over the years. And, um, and but um, one of the things on our bucket list was to go to the National Quartet Convention in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and just be a part of that. And so uh, we, we did. And, on the night we were there, um, I don't know how many know the Triumph of Quartet, but they're, they've become increasingly well known and uh, have a number of number one gospel songs, gospel quartet songs. Well, lo and behold, they open up with a really slow uh, worship song, and then they went to this song. And I had taught this song in a church I pastored probably about a dozen years ago or so. It was actually written in, the, in about the 90s by a, a worship leader, song, a prolific songwriter by the name of Tommy Walker. And uh, he uh, wrote this song in the 90s, actually. And uh, uh, then I used it in this congregation. And then we kind of picked it up again, started practicing it. Lo and behold, we hear it sung by this quartet. Uh, the night that we were at the concert. And so uh, we're going to do this song. It's a, a wonderful song. It's called We Will Remember. How many remember the day Jesus saved you? Amen. How many remember and are thankful for the fact that he saved you? Amen. 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 Amen.
swing, praise the spring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening, at your feet we fall. Adore, come let us adore, oh come. Give him honor and glory. And I want to do that with every ounce of energy and breath that I have. Praise God. Let me just mention a few things that are back on the table, back there that we have available for you. We have three CDs that we have, um, or as we call them, recording projects, because they're not just on CD format anymore. They're digital and all this kind of stuff, so it's out there on the internet. But uh, we have uh, three available back there. Our, our oldest, uh, first one was called An Open Heaven, and it has some older songs such as uh, His Eyes on a Sparrow, and Through It All, good old Andre Crouch song. Um, Look Beyond My Fault, It's All My Need, Dottie Ramble wrote that one. Um, a number of, there's 10 songs on that. The second is, um, atmosphere Changers, there's 13 songs, and I don't have time to tell the story behind why it ended up with 13 songs. There is an interesting story behind that, but um, anyway, a number of songs there that uh, um, Holy Ghost Wind, that I worship only at the feet of Jesus. Um, that's what I love about Him, and so forth. And then our newest just came out uh, this summer. Called, and we decided after using the terminology to describe what we do as eclectic, we might as well name a album or recording project eclectic, and that's what it is. And so um, some of the songs we're singing this morning are on this, this one, and uh, End of the Gates is one of them, He is Here, Almighty, um, and so forth. So those are back there. Uh, if you uh, we do have a special on them. If you buy all three, that's $30. Normally that would be $45. Buy all three. So you're basically getting one free. It's the same as getting one free. So that's back there. Also, we have two books. Um, one is our testimony. Uh, the thing that, that we find a lot still to this day uh, is that uh, people think that uh, Dean and I have been singing together you know, for years. And the fact is, we've only been married for, well, it will be seven in January. Yeah, in January. And so, um, but the interesting part of the backstory of that is the fact that we dated 48 years ago. <laughs> and uh, we dated for a year and a half, we're talking about marriage, and then I did a disappearing act on her. And, uh, and then, the Lord took us, you know, married different people, and, and our lives were completely different. We didn't see each other, didn't have any connection all those years. And then after losing both of our spouses, the Lord reconnected us miraculously in a very unique way. And it's all told in the book, and um, how God brought us back together. But you know, the amazing thing was that, that when I... When we reconnected, I found that Dina didn't hate me. <laughs> you know, she didn't hold it against me. 
and she really had a heart of forgiveness. And uh, it's, it's, it just shows grace, God's grace at work. And uh, people who read it have told us, and this is their description, not ours, but they say it's a book of hope. It's a book of hope. So if you need hope or know someone that needs hope, uh, it's a good read. It's an easy read. You can do it. Sit down and read it in the afternoon. But uh, it'll give hope to somebody. That's our prayer. That's our desire. Amen. And um, and then the second book that we uh, that I wrote actually the, the first we wrote together. We collaborated. And uh, some chapters I didn't write. Some chapters she wrote, depending on who's telling their part of the story. And some of these we wrote together. This one is uh, a, a book on worship. Um, what I found after years of pastoring and so forth, every preacher, every minister has areas that they love to study more than others, or maybe even preach on more than others. Worship and praise is kind of where I've been at times throughout the years. And so I went back through my notes, uh, put them all together in a book and study format from sermons and studies that I have done and taught and so uh, put it together and really kind of the, the stimulus for this was a missionary to Guatemala who said we need help in Guatemala with our pastors down there uh, on the area, in the area of praise and worship. So I wrote it with them kind of in mind but yet anybody can use it. It's a, it's a great tool, great study. Um, on, it's called Call to Worship, and it's back there on the back table. We have some shirts also with a logo on it that says, uh, uh, I am living under an open heaven. How many know that we are living under an open heaven? Yes. Jesus told Nathaniel that you will see the heavens open, yes. and you'll see the Son of Man ascending and descending. It kind of takes you back to the Old Testament, doesn't it? To Jacob. He saw the angels ascending and descending, and Jesus speaks the same truth, but instead of angels, it's him. Amen. It's him. And so, uh, there, you know, that's the revelation of an open heaven, and so it's a great witnessing tool. We have. We are closing those out and going to do some other things, and so they're back there on a closeout price as well. And so there's uh, also some prayer cards. If you want to lift us up in prayer, we covet prayer, the, the prayers of the saints. We really need it. When you're traveling like we do, uh, you never know what the next, the next curve on the road is going to bring when you're driving a 40-foot motorhome towing a truck behind it, flat towing a truck. And uh, you can't stop on a dive. And uh, we've had some interesting near misses. But the Lord protected us each step of the way. Amen. And uh, we need the prayers of the saints. So there's a prayer card back there. That's free. So you can take that, and anybody can take that and do that for us. And we appreciate that. We also have, one of the things that we love to do is go where nobody else might be willing to go. Do the next to rural churches, rural communities. And uh, we find... Uh, that's really where our heart is, even though we minister to churches of all uh, denominations, non-denominations, and so forth. Yet, we really, our heart is really to minister wherever the Lord would take us. But to do that, we need people to partner with us. And so there's a form for that that explains it. We talk to you more about that later if you have an interest in that area. Let me explain it a little bit further. God has a breakthrough for each one of us. Amen. He's a God of breakthrough. This would be the case. You know, if Jesus hadn't come, if Jesus hadn't come, we would all be dead in trespasses and sin. That's right. But God knew that we needed a breakthrough. We needed a change. We needed something to happen. Not only for you and me personally, that, that's the case, but also for all of humanity. And so uh, my thoughts 
to share a few thoughts this morning are, are wrapped around the idea of breakthrough. You know, there's, there's a common denominator that I find that relates to breakthrough. And the, the common de denominator in all biblical breakthroughs, if you study them, the common denominator is that they are sought after. They are sought after. Somebody sought to have a breakthrough, to have a change of life, a change of heart, something to take place that would change their circumstances. And I just pose the question this morning, do you need a breakthrough? Amen. Amen. I believe God has one for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. But we need to break out of our own personal thoughts and our own personal uh, hindrances and the things that we kind of keep God at li certain limitations and certain levels. You see, God wants to do far more than we could even begin to imagine for us. Amen. Beyond what we would ever begin to think or imagine. And we need to break out of our, our, our thinking. We need to break out of the norm. <coughs> And, and receive what he has for us. And it may be something different or a way that is different than we would begin to think or imagine. I've used this thought before, and that is the fact that if you keep doing the same thing, you'll keep getting the same thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to break for it Amen. in him. God, I believe God wants to mark your life with incredible breakthrough. Hallelujah. And so this morning my message is simple in the fact that whatever battle you're facing, we all face battles. That's, that's the lot of the human experience. And if you thought that you, you know, when you became a Christian, somehow the battles would cease, how many know they really increase? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> more and more they happen. And the more you press into God, the more battle, the battles Amen. increase. And the stronger the enemy tries to hinder and thwart our our abilities and thwart what we what we know we need from God. Amen. But I want you to know that whatever battle you're facing today, God can turn it into victory. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a God who is able to do what we can can even imagine is possible. He will turn it into victory. Let me take you to just one verse of scripture, and I have a couple of others that I'll, I'll add to it as we go along, but um, 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 20. Okay, and I'll give you a moment to turn there if you're turning in your Bibles. 2 Samuel 5, 20. Or as I say, some places it depends on the congregation as you turn to your phones. <laughs> right. <laughs> or your iPads or whatever. <laughs> so David went to Baal Perazim. And there he defeated them. And he said, As waters break out, the Lord has broken out against my enemies before me. <coughs> So the place, that place, was called Baal Perazim. For breakthrough, you have to do something different to get something different. I, I love that David said, the Lord has broken out. Now was God somehow in a box, or was God somehow hindered, or... No, God has all ability and he has all power. Amen. Where the hindrance is with us. Mm -hmm. And as a fellow minister has said, the hindrance is really between the ears. Mm -hmm. yeah. More than any place. Uh -huh. That's right. 
It's in, it's in our understanding. It's in our knowledge. It's in, it's in our thinking. Because we tend to limit God and what he can do because of what we see. Right. But God wants to do a miracle in your life. Love again that David said the Lord has broken out. Yes, yes, David had breakthrough. He had victory. He had success. But only because the Lord broke it. Amen. And we have to depend on the Lord. You can try all you want. You can try to do it in your own strength, in your own ability, in your own capacity. You can do it all you want. And the fact is, as it says in Zechariah chapter 4, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. He's the one who is breaking out for us. Hallelujah. He's Amen. breaking out ahead of us. He's breaking out the, the works of the enemy and, and breaking them down like, like waters bursting through a dam. The Lord can suddenly and dramatically change what is in front of you. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I love that word suddenly. Because it's, it's scriptural. You find it in various places. And especially on the day of Pentecost, suddenly. 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 Now, the suddenly is to us. You know, the suddenly means it caught us off guard. The suddenly is that we weren't expecting anything to happen. Or we weren't expecting it to happen right then. How many have prayed for something for years and years and years and then suddenly Amen. it happens. The answer comes. And it caught you off guard. It's not that you didn't have faith. It's not that you didn't believe or trust God. It's just that You've been praying so long that when it did happen, it caught you unaware. But I want you to know, God is never caught off guard. That's right. He That's knows right. all things. Yeah. He sees all things. He's yeah. never caught off guard. He's never caught off guard by your circumstances. That's right. Either. That's right. That's right. It's not like God is sitting there wringing his hands. That's right. Oh, woe is me. What do I do? That's our position sometimes, right? Yes. But God doesn't. He, he knows the answer. He has the answer for us. Hallelujah. Amen. He has the answer. Amen. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad for that. But you know, it, many times, for us to receive the victory and to receive the breakthrough that we need, the obstacle is us. It requires action on our part. It's not enough just to want change. You must be willing to receive the change and to even press in to where God tells you to press in. And, and, and you know, David went out. He had to fight. There was a battle. But the ultimate result was God's part. There was victory. Amen. Amen. If you want to have a breakthrough, then begin by seeking God. Mm -hmm. Seek Him. You know, no one can find in the Bible that, that ever that breakthrough that didn't come through or, or without first seeking God. David sought God. And God answered. I think about Jehoshaphat. And uh, he sought God. And proclaimed a fast among his people. They were facing an enemy. And the enemy was making all kinds of threats. And accusations. But he called the fast. Among his people. But first he had sought God. And God answered. God sent him on a, on a battle plan that is not one I would choose, and I don't think anybody here would probably choose. He sent the singers out 
are head of the army, the worshipers. And God raised up ambushments. That's the terminology that I'm familiar with. God raised up the victory that needed to take place and the enemy began to kill each other. And so that when they, re they actually arrived to the encampment of the enemy, they were either all dead or those who were still alive had fled. God raised up a victory, but Jehoshaphat sought the Lord first. When you seek God through fasting and prayer, He shows up. Amen. Come on. He always shows up. He desires to be in your presence as well as we, and He's inviting us to be in His presence. He, he invites us there. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants us to commune with him and to fellowship with him and to ask whatever we have need of more than we want to ask. Amen. He desires to be in relationship with you. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13, yes. Jeremiah says, and these really are the words of God, not just Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is just writing them down, repeating them as he received them. You will seek me and find me when you search, when you seek me with all your hearts. Seek him. Seek him with all your heart. Are you a prisoner of your own appetite? Are you chained to your own ways that you're not willing to let go and pursue something greater? Are you held a hostage by your own fears? God is the healer of broken dreams. Amen. He's the healer of all that we have need of and the restorer of the lost years. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the way we feel. Amen. You know, at our age, we should be retired or something. But I want you to know, instead of re being retired, I tried that. I tried it a couple times. And uh, instead, God keeps refiring me instead of retiring me. So I just keep going. You know, it's kind of like the Ever Ready Bunny that uh, goes in the commercials. We just uh, take a lick and keep on kicking, you know? Because God is for us. Who can stand against Amen. us? Amen. Who can come against us? Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. He's the restorer. He brought Nina and I back, and we're living it to the full. He brought us back together and doing what he wants us to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's quite an adventure. We started on this journey, let me just kind of share an aside here, but we, 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 have, we had been on the road previously for about three years, and then the Lord um, took us off the road for a couple years to help a church that had lost their pastor very suddenly. He preached on a Sunday morning, went home, collapsed in his hallway, died instantly of a massive heart attack. We had ministered in that church on several occasions, uh, both preaching and singing, and, and so they invited us or asked us to come and help them out for a period of time, and that's what we did. And, um, and then the Lord said, it's time. It's time to hit the road again, and so that's what we've been doing since about July, I guess it is now. We're back on the road. and. Uh, you know, the Lord keeps taking us to new adventures, to new levels. But, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of bookings. We didn't have a whole lot of services. And every time we, we start to get something set up, the Lord keeps changing it. Uh, a few weeks ago, we were supposed to be in North Carolina. Well, how many know what happened in North Carolina? Uh, they had the major 
tropical storm come through and really caused all kinds of havoc. And how many know you don't want to be in a tropical storm in a motorhome? <laughs> and then we ended up in North Texas in a place called Or City. How many know where Or City is? It's up by uh, just about 50 miles north of Texarkana. Excuse me, not Texarkana, but Tyler. Tyler. It's about 70 miles south of Texarkana. And uh, anyway, we were there for a couple of weeks. Well, during the time we were there in ministering, um, they rarely get tornadoes there. But one decided to come through with the storms that were coming through at that time. And it came right over or city. And in fact, when we looked at the, the mapping of it after the fact, we, you know, we started praying. We sent out, you know, requests for our Facebook friends and everybody else. We could pray. <laughs> we called the pastor of the church that we were parked at at the time, and uh, he said, uh, "You come here, to my place." And he lives several miles away, and so we jumped there in our dogs and our everything else we could in our truck and headed because he had a storm cellar, and we ended up there, waited it out. When we did the tracking, what happened is it split and went around Or City. And uh, how many know you don't want to be in a motorhome in, in, during a tornado either? And so we've had some experiences like that, but God has been faithful. And even as we've had you know things that we've had to adjust in our schedule and and, and timing, as I mentioned, the Cowboy Church that we were supposed to be at this morning, God seems to open up another door. Here we are. Amen. It's a life of faith. That's why we call it a life of faith. Right. The question arises, will you open the door to God and what he wants to do in your life? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Amen. How often we mistakenly think worry is the same thing as praying. I had great parents, grew up in a Christian home, Pentecostal Christian home, which is unique in itself. Um, but my mom was, a, as much as I love her, she's with the Lord, she was a worrier. And uh, my dad usually would say, you know, when she was concerned about him, where he'd been, or because he hadn't checked in soon enough, or whatever the case may be, she'd say, you know, he'd say, well, you know, she was praying, and he'd say, well, you worry enough for all of us, so <laughs> not worry. He's pretty laid back. But, you know, sometimes we mistake what I call worry praying as prayers of faith, and they're not. That because we are in an area of deep need, God will provide. We, we forget we have never actually, actually even asked him for help sometimes. We've told everybody else about it, but we really haven't prayed. Sure, there are times we will experience God's grace and kindness because he is a good God. He's a good father. And he surprises us often. But the adventure lies in the conversation that we have with him. If you want to see miraculous breakthroughs for yourself and for your family, talk to him. Amen. Talk to him. That's all I can say. God longs for us to initiate conversation with him regarding the things that weigh heavy on us. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 reminds us we are able to come to him and he will give us rest and lighten our loads 
It says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Right. Thanks, Lord. If it is big enough to worry about, I assure you, it is big enough to pray about. That's right. Amen. Moreover, God loves when we converse specifically talking to him about the details of our prayers. May we come and ask him specifically for the needs that we have. Let me take you to one more scripture portion, and it's Psalm chapter 84, verses 5 and 7. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. May we seek the presence of the Lord. I pray you will take God at his word. He who has promised is indeed faithful. Pray specific prayers and watch for specific breakthroughs. Your valley of trouble can and very well may become your valley of victory. All it takes is a conversation with him. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through that valley, it becomes a valley of spring of waters, hallelujah, of pools. Instead of a place to moan and groan about and say, I'm going to die here. But instead, allowing the presence of the Lord to fill you and minister to you. Dean's going to come. We're going to sing one more song. This song really speaks to the truth. You may know it. Another way to describe what we do is that we do everything from the hoppers to David Crowder. Yeah, this song is a song by David Crowder written a few years ago. But we started using it more and more. All our hope is in God and in Jesus. Amen. Amen. All our hope is in Him. Hallelujah.
Touching anything, yes. it will be done. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Old Testament says that you know one can send a thousand to flight. How many can two? Amen. Ten thousand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has answers for each of you right now. In the name of Jesus, just agree together. Amen. And lift that name and name it before the Lord even right now. In the name of Jesus, we agree together for victory in that need, in that area of need, in the name of Jesus. Lord, for healing, your healing will just flow across this place right now. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. For victory right now, in the name of Jesus. For family relationships, in the name of Jesus, to be broke, to be healed and restored and victories to come right now. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, Lord, for doing that. Lord, doing beyond what we would even begin to think or imagine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we just, pre we just proclaim your victory right now over those lives, over those circumstances, over the needs that are represented here. Hallelujah. We just agree together, Lord, as we press into you for breakthrough. Amen. For yes, breakthrough. Yes. In the name amen, of Jesus. Amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 